Hello and welcome to An Educator Talk Show. If you can dream it, you can do it. Today on my show, I've got Kasun Gunaratna, who is the head of marketing of uh, Elephant House Frozen uh, Confectionery. We also have him as the assistant vice president, John Keels Holdings PLC. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, I would like to straight away jump into the question as to who is in your family and a little bit of a background about you so we can get to, you know, the basic main story of who is Kasun? Yes, my family is uh, just a small family mm -hmm. with my parents, mother, father and I have elder brother uh, and me. So that's the family for now. Yeah. So Kasun, what was the impact of your family's upbringing um, made for you? Yes, being uh, average and very neutral towards me. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming from out of Colombo, uh, from Nittambur and uh, they were always supporting me but without giving much of opinion of what I do. So it's all about directing on the certain things which may be non-career related. Uh, so I had my own uh, opportunity of change in the ways that I wanted uh, and where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a good impact that I had, which every parent should give their kids. Can you tell us a little bit about your childhood? Yes. Um, so I was, I, I uh, mainly I grew up in uh, Nittambua, which is a small family, small town. And at the same time, I came to Colombo for schooling. So it's between like Colombo and uh, out of Colombo life that I used to have. So a lot of time spent with all these so-called, uh, the playing cricket in the um, coconut states and mm -hmm. uh, running here and there with my friends, other friends. So it's, it's a really good childhood that I, I have like most of the things that we read on the novels and on the movies, uh, so it's really good. Who did you want to be when you were young? To become a pilot. Okay. Yeah. I think and that's that's a dream of most of the boys mm. uh, at that age. They think that's very that time, fancy. Very fancy and you can go fast, not in the roads, but in the sky. So that's a dream job for most of the boys. So the childhood that you had, do you think it really impacted your you know, personality and your upbringing or your growth in your personal life and also your career? I think so, uh, because I had enough space of thinking different things and uh, no structured way of thinking mm -hmm. and a lot of free time, mm -hmm. a lot of play time with the kids and the other friends and some good family times with the parents and my brother. So I think those things have definitely helped. How important is a good, healthy life for you? I think one of the most important things. Good, healthy life means uh, both physical and mental. I think that is what every one of us want. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have any doubts about what's the level of importance that I give, it to, give, give to the healthy life. Maybe mm -hmm. probably the top, mm -hmm. top importance there. So a little birdie came and told me you're a traveler. And... Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it would be perfect for me to ask you, where do you like to travel? Everywhere. Okay. You like traveling in the, Sri Lanka or do you, do you always like to take trips I think out? the travel is a traveler, you know, it doesn't mm. matter like, you know, where you go. So elaborate a little bit about it. Where do you go? Do you? I know that you, you need that fancy answer. I want to go there and spend some time <laughs> there, right? So I'll give that as well, right? So I, I have a dream of going to Iceland. Okay. And uh, <laughs> no, no. stay a night there. Okay. So that's right. But at the same time, for me, so those things are less frequent of occurrence. So I travel the way I want, like, you know, maybe the morning, week, weekends, you know, you wake up in the morning and... Do you travel alone? Do you have like a bunch of hiking friends both. or...? Yeah, mm. that's what I'm saying. The so travel is being a traveler, you know, you, you take the maximum out of the opportunities that you get. Actually, sometimes you have friends, sometimes you're alone, doesn't matter. It's a perfect question for you. Like, how do you balance work and, you know, leisure time? in between like I mean a traveler sometimes has like off peak no data servers and all of that just goes off but then also you're very responsible person with the you know with the opportunities that you have under you how do how do you balance it how do you have that balance with work and I, I can't deny the fact that uh, the little bit of planning is required because especially when you're balancing the work life work and the travel life as well 
but at the same time doing what you have to do at that point at the maximum level would do. Mm -hmm. So you have five days, maybe six days that you're working. There are days that I work seven days as well. Mm -hmm. But you're putting the maximum out of uh, those time periods that you get. At the same time, when you get to travel, you put your 100% focus on that, you do that. Because that's, where, that, that's how you can enjoy it. Otherwise, you will be like thinking about something and uh, thinking about work while you're traveling and thinking about travel while, while you're working. Mm -hmm. That way it doesn't work. Yeah. How do you see Sri Lankan um, travel or the tourism industry right now and do you think we have space for it to grow? Of course, I see Sri Lankan tourism as, a, uh, as an uncut diamond. So thing is we offer only basics at the moment. There are so much of potential, the value additions that you need to uh, add to bring that attention to Sri Lanka. Because the, the, fortunately our basics are really good, so not many countries uh, have that. So because of that, we are, we are like we have this industry and we are making some money, but that's again from the basics. Maybe uh, I think it's maybe three to five percent of the total potential. Okay, based on your experiences, uh, and if you had to give advice to a child, what would how would you <laughs> how would you advise? Yeah. Based on your experiences, you know, like whatever you, you've mm -hmm. seen, how you've grown, you've done it now. So you're talking to maybe a five to ten year old, two kids, you know, how would, how would you advise them? Maybe not blindly doing what your parents ask you to do. Because in Sri Lankan, the most of the parents now may be from generation X and Y, but still I see they are a little bit too structured to what they heard from their their parents to become a engineer, doctor. I actually agree with you, cousin. I'm I'm a I'm a parent myself, and sometimes yeah. we get pressured to to do what maybe you have failed to do, and then suddenly you want them to do what you were supposed to do, right? And then psychologically, you're pressuring the child to. Um, you know, run borders of maybe an 18 year old at, you know, grade 5 or something like that. So I completely get your point. Um, would you like to elaborate on it? How, how well do you think it's going to work or, you know? Yeah, but at certain age of the childhood, you need that guidance, like maybe 5, 10, but at the time, the, the kids can think by themselves, like, you know, they can make their own judgments and stuff. So I think you should give some space to them as well. They are, you know, what, what they like and what they're really passionate about. Uh, so that freedom should be given to the kids. That's why, because it is not happening here. That's why we don't see much of the businesses not growing because everyone is pushing towards this formal and maybe the governmental, uh, government-centered educational structures. Uh, so those things are not happening there. But if you look at the really the fast, rapidly developing countries, the systems are different. So I think we. Uh, we need it in this country as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And we are done with the first segment. We will be speaking to Kasun in the second segment. Uh, stay tuned. Welcome back. And we are into the segment two. I will start with um, a very important question, perhaps you would be best to ask this. How important is branding? Yes, it's, it's important because it's all about connecting to your consumer mm -hmm. emotionally as well as being relevant to them. So when you talk about connecting emotionally as well as being relevant, I don't see any other answer than branding. Uh, do you think we can take like a local brand to the international market? Of course, yes. So there are a classic examples. So we have several brands like, you know, Dilma being the prominent brand, which are very dominant in that space, as well as uh, there are several other brands like Spasilon. So it's all about understanding what's core competency that you have. And uh, sometimes you have this advantage, we call it country of origin stereotyping. So which exactly what Dilma is playing right now is uh, tea from Sri Lanka, Sloan tea. And that's the one thing. The other thing is developing certain competencies like what India is currently doing because India has so much to offer 
may be culture, may be so many other things, but while they are focusing on that, they are developing new competencies where the tech-driven, tech-savvy people who are the experts of this. So that's the feeding squad for the whole world now. So that's why any brand, any country can go global if you develop those right core competencies within your country. Uh, what kind of a support would you require from the government if you were to take a brand uh, to the international sea? Exactly the support that we don't get right now as far <laughs> as I <laughs> uh, feel. Um, I think they are the governors. They have to clear the roadblocks for us. Mm -hmm. And there are great marketers, great business managers in this country. They can drive this forward, but the only thing is government has to clear those roadblocks. Okay. What are some of your favorite marketing or advertising campaigns that you've seen? It could be local or international, whatever comes to your mind. Yes, um, as you asked, both local and international. Locally, we had Elephant House doing a lot of um, marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. Recently, something that we launched was Elephant House Superheroes, mm -hmm. which we are trying to connect with the younger audience of this country. Mm -hmm. Because we see we need to be uh, with Sri Lankan citizens, emotionally connected to them at a younger age. Because when you are growing up, there are so many things in your mind and your focus is attention is deviating from one to another. So before that, uh, we also want to be very close to them and grow, uh, let them grow with us. So that's one of the great marketing campaigns that we do uh, at Elephant House. And globally also I have seen uh, several great campaigns how the German brand Audi um, competing with two other uh, German brands, maybe for Mercedes-Benz and uh, BMW. So it's all about, we used to believe in marketing, it's all about doing what you are good at. And you're always focusing on one thing that you're really good at, which really works. But at the same time, this brand new, I can't say Audi is new, but coming very strongly recently. So we, we, we look at, uh, when you look at them, we can see they are focusing on so many different things that the modern corporate wants. So they are strong at so many different things, which could be really challenging for the rest of the brands uh, in the same industry. How do you know a brand strategy isn't working? That's a, uh, that's a long answer. So there are several red flags that you can see. It mm -hmm. might come on the, so as brand marketers, we maintain all these dashboards of mm -hmm. the uh, key performance of the mm -hmm. brands. You might get the red flags from those. You might get some great marketers have this uh, sixth sense mm -hmm. that they, they feel it, which we currently we don't focus much on, but we are very, being very scientific research based. Um, so we, when you focus on these key performing indicators of the brand, and the, your strategy and what they are return, reverting back to you. Uh, so we'll get the right indication of uh, what exactly happening. So then you can change your direction. So you probably have a lot of products under you, right? But how do you know when you need to change the pricing? We change the pricing at several points. Uh, it could be internal call, it could be a reaction to the um, uh, what's market is doing, it can mm -hmm. be a reaction to the competitors as well. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of things that we look at when you're changing the price. Probably the what market demands for and when you see your target market, target audience, per capita income grows, yes, there's an opportunity for you. Right? So you can make your product superior and charge more. Sometimes you don't have to look at all these things. You have internal cost pressure. Obviously, you have to look at the change in price, so different strategy. At the same time, you have to respond to your competition as well sometimes because Sri Lanka is a very price sensitive, elastic market. So most of the times we go for prices. Okay. So we compromise the quality sometimes. So in that case, uh, you have to play with the prices, but I'm, I'm emphasizing on the fact that it's a very dangerous tool to play with, the price. But still something, one of the important things that you work with. Right. So let's say that your team doesn't agree with your plan. Yeah. How do you handle it? Yeah, of course, uh, that happens all the time. Because uh, all these marketers, we, when you work with great marketers, they always don't buy what you uh, say as it is, mm -hmm. there will be questions, there will be 
uh, some kind of uh, objections from mm -hmm. them as well. So it's mm -hmm. all about like listening to them and uh, understand what exactly the question, the the resistance is, mm -hmm. and find a solution to that. So that I don't say that always you need to go back to the, all the team's uh, thoughts and give answers for them, but it all depends. But listening to the people is a key. But it's all up to you after that with listening and you are taking action according to that or you are going on, uh, on the direction that you really want to do. But listening is the key, but then your action is in your control. All right, Kasun, thank you so much. And we are at the end of segment two. The next one is my favorite because I put everybody in trouble uh, because even I don't know the questions and you'll be randomly picking it and giving it to me. So we'll head to the rapid fire and I will see you in the next segment. Welcome back to the last segment, which I am going to very happily throw Kasun into the deep end with the rapid fire. So what you need to do is you need to pick the card, give it to me and I'm going to read it out and then you can answer the question in your most um, ultimate way. Yeah, you can start right now. You have to pick? Yes. You have to shuffle this? No, you don't have to shuffle it. But I don't even, I don't, I, even I didn't touch it, so. Okay, what did you want to be when you were small? I think I answered it already. Pilot. Okay. You had one more chance to change it, but you didn't, no? Yeah. Oh, it... why am I picking it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you can pick it. No, no. <laughs> Somebody can pick it. <laughs> okay. Should I give it to you? Nobody or? gave me the chance to yeah. pick. No, that's why it's I naturally. Did. What? Uh, would you change about yourself uh, if you could? If you could change something about yourself, what would it be? Nothing. Nothing. You like the way yeah. you are. Okay. Um, the next one. So you have seven to pick. Okay. So we've just done two. Okay. What does your child want to be when he or she grows up? <laughs> You don't have a child, okay? Yeah. We move on. Mm -hmm. If you were willing to give pocket money to a child, how will you give? Maybe we can also twist the question a little bit. How will you give and what would you ask a child to do? Go eat ice cream. Okay, fantastic. Next one. Right, name one thing you can, name one thing you would like to change about Sri Lanka. Everything. One thing. Yeah, everything. Okay, one thing is a word then, everything. Yeah. Okay, to the next one. <laughs> oh, what three movies should all people watch? Three movies should all people watch? I don't watch movies. You don't? No. Really? Yeah. Next time if we yeah. see, next time if you see him at a cinema, I think we can all... <laughs> you will not see me. Kasun. <laughs> okay, next one. Um, what is your favorite game or sport to watch or play? Boxing. Okay. Um, what motivates you to work hard? So challenge yourself every day to improve yourself to the next level to serve others. Okay, we'll do one more. One more. Who is your biggest inspiration? My mother. Your mom. Okay. I have one question that I'll add into this. Yeah. Um, what is your dream car? My dream car? Gadi. Okay. All right. It was great having you. Thank you so much for coming. And we will take leave from here. Uh, stay tuned with An Educator, The Talk Show.